Welcome to our CamWorks What's New 2018 webinar. In this webinar, we will take a look at the three axis milling portion of SolarWorks. Roland will be running through the presentation today, and towards the end, uh, there will be a time for us to ask any questions and for us to answer that for you. I'll let Roland run through the presentation now. What's new in CAMWORKS 2018? CAMWORKS 2018 has many uh, major enhancements and also many, many more small enhancements, but we are just going to focus on the most significant changes compared to previous versions. The first major change is that CAMWORKS comes with a new three-axis uh, generator for three axis tool pass generation. So this will improve greatly the quality of the three axis tool pass generator. Also, we have a lot of preview images. Before the images in the menu were static. Now all images are dynamic and every time you click an option or a function, you will see the image showing you what that function actually does. This is true for two and a half axis mill, and it's also true for three axis milling. Whatever option you click, you will see you have a dynamic preview image showing what that function would actually do. So this is a great enhancement to the user interface. The other uh, great change also is automatic feature ordering based on the depth. So if you have many nested features like pocket in a pocket or slot in a slot. The feature at the top or higher Z level will come first and be machined first. And then a feature at the lower level come, will come next or at the end. So uh, this is great. You still can move around by uh, dragging uh, single features, but there is a menu now that will allow you to order the feature based on your preference. So the sort feature command will allow you to uh, sort the feature the way you want and they will be machined in that order. Enhance volume mill tool path. Volume mill two and a half axis can now actually machine three axis pocket. In the past, an axis volume mill could not machine a pocket uh, with taper and radiuses. The new volume mill 2.5 axis can actually now machine a 3 axis pocket, and it's great for people who just have the 2.5 axis uh, milling and volume mill. Mirroring tool pass command at the setup level. In the past, if you wanted to mirror uh, operation, you had to do this for every single operation. Now you can go at the setup level and mirror the tool pass for uh, all the operation of a part just uh, at once. Support for scallop for area clearance and D level. Now at area clearance, you can enter a scallop, so the allowance for the roughing will be constant all over the three axis uh, area clearance. The same is true for the finishing at Z level. Now you can enter scallop value and you will have a constant surface finish all over the uh, operation. So this is great for improving the quality and the surface finish. Bottom-up machining of the level. This option allows you actually to start the finishing the level operation at the bottom instead of starting just at the top. This may be convenient if you have a pocket and uh, or a deep cavity and you prefer to start at the, at the bottom to avoid problem with the coolant or chips that are falling down. Improved rest machining. In, in the past, uh, rest machining in three axis mill would not always generate a uh, neat tool pass like it does actually in a two and a half axis. So 
this has been changed and uh, greatly improved. So the rest machining looks more like in two and a half axis mill and generates a clean tool path. Adaptive roughing strategy. For people who don't have volume mill, this may be an alternative. It doesn't compete right now with volume mill since it has less uh, or fewer options and the feed is constant all over the uh, tool pass while in uh, volume mill it's changing and adapting actually to the, to the curve uh, which gets machined. So it's not a direct replacement, but it does a good job in the sense that it uses the same kind of trochoidal uh, tool pass. So this is a good uh, option for, again, people who don't have the volume mill. And adaptive roughing is owned by HCL and will evolve over time and add more uh, feature over time to compare more with volume mill. Support for custom tool in three axis milling. This is new. And you can now actually machine a three axis shape by using a form tool. In the past, this was only possible in a two and a half axis milling. Now, this is true also for three axis milling. And we're going to see an example in a demo later on. Stock alignment option is great. Although in the past, a part which was not aligned to the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system uh, would just get a bounding box, which was typically a uh, too big man. And what you had to do is either create a sketch or use an uh, STL file. Now you simply can align the stock along the major axis of the part you want to machine. Also great change is a TechDB, which comes with a brand new interface, uh, user-friendly, greatly uh, increased uh, user-friendliness, Still, the content remains the same, more or less, but uh, the user interface has been totally uh, remade in a new app. In this uh, webinar, we're going to show you five videos, five demonstrations. The first one showing more the general uh, enhancement and change and that affect uh, the two and a half axis as well as the three axis and all the other modules as well. And if you want more information on all the changes, there's a what's new video available on the CAMWORKS website where uh, they show all the new enhancements. The video two will show the new volume mill tool pass as an example of a three axis pocket machine with two and a half axis uh, volume. Demo number three will show a uh, uh, 3D step over option in pattern project. And this shows how you can greatly uh, improve the quality of a tool pass by just applying this new option. Demo number four will show how you can actually uh, optimize the tool pass to get uh, better quality tool pass and of course a better surface finish and an example of a D level machining using a form tool also showing the mirroring of the tool pass at the setup level and the last the fifth demo will briefly show the difference in tool pass uh, using volume mill compared to adaptive roughing The first demo is going to cover following topics. Uh, the advanced machining option, how to activate it, where it's located. Second, uh, how to create a coordinate system, a SOLIDWORKS coordinate system directly in CAMWORKS. And also showing the stock alignment option. Then the sort feature command, how to sort feature by using that command. The new preview images of the user interface then uh, how to mirror tool pass at the setup level and showing as well the new tech tv interface and last not least uh, camworks now comes with an integrated uh, simco nc editor 
which has a nice backplot feature uh, that allows you to view actually your toolpath and edit if needed. Let us first start by going to the CAMWORKS option menu. Under the update tab, we will find now the advanced method, new machining method, the previous method used in CAMWORKS 2017 and earlier is still there for compatibility reason, but the new default obviously is the advanced method. Okay. Now let's look at this part, which is actually not aligned along the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system. This happens when you design a part in the assembly or let's say for any other reason. And in the past, if you wanted to machine this with a stock aligned along the axis of the part, you had to draw a sketch or use an STL file. So in CAMWORKS 2018, we have now another option. Let's go to our coordinate system here and I could select a SOLIDWORKS coordinate system or define one myself. Here I have several options by using those vertices. I could create a coordinate system, same for the stock bounding box. But let's say we want to create our own coordinate system right here. And we want to create a SOLIDWORKS coordinate system directly within CAMWORKS. Now, I could change the name if I wanted to, I say OK. I quit here and I go quickly to SOLIDWORKS and here we have our coordinate system, which I'm going to edit in order to align the axis along that edge. So we have now our coordinate system here. Go back to CAMWORKS to the stock manager and here there is a new option as well. I can select fixture coordinate system and you see that the stock is now aligned along the path and uh, no need for a sketch or an STL. Okay, let's move on by extracting our features and you see that we have top pocket, bottom pocket and the hole here and the holes at the bottom here of that pocket. The feature are sorted out along the descending Z axis so feature at the top come always first and feature at the bottom come last and are also machined in that order. Now of course you can still move those feature around like you did in the past or go here and use the sort command to move the feature the way you want just by selecting them and move up or down. Okay, So you can really sort a feature the way you want and they're going to be machined in that order as well. Let's just generate our operation plan and quickly our toolpath. Now if I go to Rough mill menu. So the content still more or less the same, but what's definitely different are these preview images that show exactly what those options actually do. So in the past, sometimes you had to try or go to the help to make sure uh, you select the right parameter or the right uh, option. Now you see right away what it does it or contain area so it's nice to see right away how those parameters are meant to be used. Under the optimize tab you see now also how CAMOX can optimize the toolpath. The function itself is not new but the preview is certainly new and let you know how CAMOX is going to optimize the toolpath. What is new also is that the Tech DB button is now under the Optimize tab for all operations. If I select the Tech DB, the new app opens and what you can see is a total new layout. So here I still have my milling machines. 
now my feature and operation content is still the same just layout is totally uh, different and this is true for turn mill turn as well if I go on the mill tooling still have all my tools here with a tool parameter so you can still edit change delete or add new tools like you would in the past and the setting I see now that I have three different databases I'm still using the SQL server you still can use Microsoft Access but the new default is SQLite why SQLite? SQLite comes automatically with CamWorks gets automatically installed together with CamWorks there is no need for any prerequisite like Access or SQL Server so this is a new default SQL Lite. What is new also is that now the save as default is right here. So if you're changing any parameter, you can go to the Optimize tab and save this parameter as default. Before you had to go to the feature tree, uh, right click and save uh, operation plan. Now you can do this right in this menu. And also, you could load the default right here if you wanted to apply the default to this operation. So this is very nice and, again, very convenient to have everything in the same window. Let's go to the contour mill. Same here. Just select the parameter so I see right away what those do. And especially here, it's helpful to see the angle cut amount spiral and lead in angle so it's very useful uh, for the user to see uh, what those options do and be able to uh, make the right choice uh, right away okay now we are going to generate our NC code And CamWorks opens automatically the new CamWorks uh, NC editor, which in fact is a Simco edit, which comes with a backplot window, which allows you to view and verify your tool path and edit if needed. Okay. Next, we're going to do is uh, mirror those. Tool pass. In the past, I had uh, only the option to mirror every single operation. Now I can do it at once. But before, let's go back to our machine. I select the multicam and set up and make sure that my coordinate system uh, is selected. This is a fixture or machine coordinate. Uh, system okay just say okay now if I go under the setup the advanced tab I can see now I have the option here to mirror my toolpad I select an entity it will be across this edge and of course I need to have an offset here let's say 400 millimeter and here I can see I can mirror the tool pass for all operation in that part. And I say OK. You can see now all the operations have been mirrored. I need to adjust my stock obviously, so I'm going to add those 400 millimeter here as well. OK. So if I simulate, here we are. So it's very easy now to mirror entire parts by just uh, going onto the setup menu and mirror all the operation at once or instead of doing operation by operation. In this demo, we're going to briefly show you how you can use actually the 2.5 axis uh, volume mill 
to a rough uh, pocket with tape and radius and also show the difference to the three axis volume mill and uh, the level machining. In this demo we are going to show how we can machine a pocket with tape and radius by just using two and a half axis milling strategy including the new volume mill uh, two and a half axis. For this let's just start by extracting the features automatically and we see that Camox actually recognize that pocket. Let's just quickly change the strategy here. I'm selecting cavity tape, which I created just for this pocket. It's OK. And right click and generate our operation plan. Now, before generating toolpaths, let's quickly go to the menu. Under roughing, we see you have still all the different uh, pocketing strategy. And when I select the volume mill, it opens automatically uh, windows which is actually the technology expert where I can select the exact material which I'm cutting, the hardness of the material, coating if any, part holding, machine taper, tool holder type and although I can go from conservative to aggressive. This depends highly on your machine, whether it's a new one, an older one, it depends on your control and it depends on your tool. So if we go back here, we just have uh, this parameter and let's say I'm going to select here 100 millimeter, say OK, and generate our toolpath. Okay, here we go. Now let's look at this from the side. Just make it transparent. And you can see that the tool pass, volume in tool pass, actually nicely following the shape of uh, that pocket. Let's quickly simulate. And have a look at the section view. So this is how the roughing would look like with a two and a half axis volume mill. Let's just continue and finish that part by just adding a contour mill and here it's done. So you can see you can actually machine a 3D pocket by just using two and a half axis strategy. But let's see how it compares to a three axis uh, milling. So for this I'm going to create a multi-surface feature and select all the faces. Oops, I was too quick. I'm going to edit definition and select the strategy area clearance and Z level which is more appropriate for that pocket. Let's just uh, generate the operation plan. Same here, just first go to the menu and you see you have my volume mill and uh, different pocketing strategies. When I select volume mill, I automatically get again to that window where I can set all the parameters, select the material, say OK. And here, and this is new for Camwork 2018, I have the option to say whether I'm machining the outside of the part or if I'm machining actually a cavity, which is our case. The tool has a flute length of 10 millimeter. So here, this is a maximum actually I can take and just go to 10 millimeter instead and say, okay. Now I generate the toolpath. This is going to take a bit longer than for the two half axis because it takes smaller steps for the finishing. Okay. 
Okay. Now let's quickly simulate this. You can see it takes cuts of 10 millimeters and then makes steps of one millimeter. If I go here, cross section. Now this is following nicely the surface, uh, the shape of the pocket, and here we have our one millimeter step which I could make smaller if needed. So this is how the three axis uh, volume is looks like. Now if I go to the level, let's just quickly open the menu and I'll select helical here and you can see the image preview as well and take one millimeter steps to generate the tool pass. Okay, oops, my mistake. Since I selected all the faces, it's generating the toolpath for the entire part, which we don't want, of course. So how can we help? Just go here, right click, and insert a new content area. Just select the edge, and I say tool on curve, click, and it automatically regenerates, and this time it will stay within the pocket. Now we can see that uh, there are very few steps here and the radius will not be machined properly. So how can we help? In the past we could just do small steps. Now we have here a new option which is scallop. So I have the ability now to machine with the level and have a constant scallop. In that case let's say just one hundredth of millimeter. Minimum cut amount let's say to five hundredths and max one millimeter. Okay, let's just redo it. Okay, and now you can see the tool pass is very nice and at the top we have actually uh, more tool pass than before so we have a really constant scallop even on the radius part of that pocket. Uh, another option Under the links tab, there is an option bottom up. I say OK. Now you see the tool pass is actually starting at the bottom instead of starting at the top. So I can just revert this. This is new, although in CAMWX 2018, the ability to uh, select that option bottom up. If I unselect, it will start from the top again, like this. So very nice toolpath, very nice option for the Z-level machining. In uh, this demonstration, we are going to show you a good example on how you can practically use a new 3D step over option to greatly improve the quality of a tool pass generated by using the pattern project uh, machining strategy. We are going to use this part to demonstrate the new 3D step over option uh, to machine that contour uh, with pattern project. To do so, let's first insert setup. Then we are going to add our multi surface feature, just select everything and the strategy leave to area clearance and pattern project. Okay. Then generate operation plan. Go to the graphing menu. Let's just have a look at the tool, which seems too big. Let's select, uh, let's say, an 8 millimeter flat end mill and go to the pattern. Here we want 
to use Volumil. This is a window where I can actually select the material and the hardness. We saw this before. Let's assume it's OK. And now we can use also that new option to machine the outside of the part. Let's just make sure our parameters here are correct. Let's 10 millimeter and one millimeter steps and maybe here go to zero okay generate tool pass now um volume mill is going to remove all the stock material outside of that part this is a new uh, option also in camworks 2018 almost there okay so this is a volume mill tool pass to remove the material outside now let's go to the finishing just select although maybe a small tool here something like uh, six millimeter ball nose okay go to the pattern project and just uh, 05 go into the advanced tab and make sure the tool can go around the part let's just generate our tool path okay so even it doesn't look bad in terms of machining it's not good since the tool is going up and down so the surface finishing is going to be bad or not really good so this is not a good way to machine this how can we change it Let's go to edit definition and we select flow line instead first curve just click the face so will go along the outside of this uh, area select my second curve which is the bottom of the shape and allow the tool to go down so I added the 3.2 millimeter okay, okay and just regenerate our tool path So this is what happened in Camox uh, earlier version. You would get spikes in a tool pass and it uh, would be normally nearly impossible to get rid of these uh, spikes and had to use a Z level or any other uh, machining strategy to get rid of those spikes. Now here I go on to edit definition and Uh, let's say first I'm going to say uh, zig and under the pattern use the new 3D step over option. Just recalculate it. Okay, here we go. You can see now we have absolutely clean tool pass. So this is a great uh, improvement because before it was nearly impossible to get a clean tool pass or spikes would remain no, no matter what. And now with this simple uh, click here on the, on the menu, you can get absolutely a clean tool pass. So great option. In this presentation, we're going to see another example of volume mill roughing using a different uh, option. The 3D step over tool pass optimization for a three axis pocket and also a Z level machining using a form tool. Plus, to finish, a setup mirroring of all tool passes.
start by first uh, creating our nil part setup. Just click the top face and insert our multi surface feature. In this case, also, I will just select all the faces. And as a strategy, use constant step over. Okay. I just generate the operation plan. Before generating toolpaths, let's go quickly to the menu. And uh, we are not going to use the pocket out, but the volume in. Again, the message that leads me to the parameter window where I can select material and the different uh, machining parameter. Let's assume it's OK. Go back here. And remember, now we machine a cavity. Uh, let's say our tool is uh, 12 millimeter tool. Uh, let's take maybe something smaller, maybe it select area clearance and go back here, let's say 10 millimeter and uh, maybe one millimeter or 1.5 millimeter steps and you can see here there's also a new option hit flat what it does is to make sure that all the bosses or island like here would be machined to the same uh, alignment so it's up with 0.2 here all of uh, the islands top will be machined with that allowance. Just in order not to take too much time for uh, for the generation of the tool paths, I'm going to put a step over of, at 15% and go. Let's uh, generate our tool path. So this pocket has a taper at the bottom, it's uh, not flat, but the uh, top of the island is flat. So that means that will be machined by volume mill with that Z uh, allowance we put in before. So this is my tool path for the graphing. Let's move to the step over. Okay, constant step over. Uh, maybe I'm going to change the tool as well here, maybe a bit smaller tool. I'll take the six millimeter because we have small radius at the bottom here. Constant step over and cut amount. Let's check. I just put one millimeter so we can actually see the, the tool pass and uh, say OK. Now, before generating the tool pass, I need to insert a contain area to make sure the tool remains just inside the pocket. And I say tool on curve and OK and generate tool pass. Okay. Now what we see is the tool is just going across that island. And uh, as we know, in terms of uh, surface finishing, this will not be good because of the uh, swift change of direction of the tool and of course of the feet. So it's not good for the machine, it's not good for the tool and for the finishing either. So how can we make this look better? First, uh, let's say 
we insert a navoid area and do not want to machine let's say that uh, island so it doesn't let me select the contour because it's not flat at the bottom so i'm selecting just the faces here and camox creates again the avoid area make sure tool on curve say okay and regenerate tool pass now we see the tool pass stops at the island but of course it's not very nice because we have rapid moves uh, up and downs so how can we fix this we go again to edit definition and here is a new option where it says uh, offset curve from contain area only or contain and avoid you can see the difference from contain it just offset the curves from the outer contour or contain and avoid it offset the curve between those two contours so just let's do it Okay, and now you can see the tool path going nicely around the boss, and that's smooth and will be or um, give a great uh, finishing. Now, of course, we want to machine uh, that boss as well. So I'm going to copy this uh, operation, holding the control key and just uh, dragging the operation, and I have a copy. This pencil mill I don't need, so I will just delete. Now, by copying, I keep the tool and I keep all the parameters, but of course, the content area is different, so I just say edit definition. And instead of taking that uh, loop, I select now as a content area these faces. Okay, and the avoid area needs to be changed as well. So I'm going to delete those faces here and just select as an avoid. Uh, oops, there is one too many now. And say Okay, now I can generate the tool path for this. Okay, now you can see it just machines the island in a proper way, the clean tool path as well. So just by using uh, the contain and avoid and that uh, option within uh, CamWorks here, you can get absolutely good tool passes. So what remains to be done is uh, still that groove, which we're going to machine as a three axis operation with a form tool. This is new. This was not possible before in uh, Camel. So let's just insert uh, a new three axis. And here we're going to select uh, Z level. And when I insert a new uh, operation, uh, you see the system bring up the tool selection. So before going ahead, I can already select the tool I want to choose for this operation. So this is a special tool which I made to machine that groove. Here I could select the feature if we would have uh, more than one, but then just one feature, and I say, okay. Now, before generating tool pass on uh, the level, the cut amount, of course, needs to be reduced from 15, let's say, and I uh, cannot start, let's say, at the top of the stock here. I need to go here and say user defined, 
and tell the system uh, to start here and minus 4.5 which is actually the thickness of uh, of the tool okay now bottom of the stock uh, is wrong so it's also user defined here and we tell the system to stop machining here okay so i guess uh, this is it let's just generate our toolpath okay now obviously it wants to machine uh, down here which is my mistake so same here quickly uh, insert a new avoid area and i can actually select uh, that sketch maybe uh, minus uh, 10 or something i'm not sure all right just 10 millimeter wrong way okay and regenerate okay now let's look at this from the side maybe just uh, and then make it transparent and zoom a bit and you see we have here a three axis toolpath that is following that shape. I'm trying to go a step through toolpath to maybe illustrate this a bit better. So we can see here how the tool is actually machining that groove. And so this is new in CAMWORKS 2018 that you can have a form tool to uh, machine three axis geometry. To finish, we are going to use again the mirror at the setup level. So if I go uh, setup and the advanced, we showed this before. Remember, maybe I can mirror toolpath. And uh, this time, this is a long X and can give a distance of maybe 50 and select that edge and apply to all oops uh, sorry my mistake i need to of course to go in here and select uh, the edge now it's selected 50 millimeter and again apply to all yes takes a bit of time because since uh, they're all three axis uh, machining tool paths Okay. So we can see it's already mirrored. And uh, I showed this, even we showed it before, but uh, these are all three axis operations. So this was just to make sure uh, I have shown that it works actually also for three axis uh, operation that you can mirror at the setup level. In this demo, we are going to uh, show briefly the difference between adaptive milling uh, versus volume mill. Uh, volume mill, as you know, is an uh, optional module to CAMWORKS and uh, is highly efficient for graphing. 
volume mill. Uh, feed rate is changing constantly to keep the volumetric cut amount constant. Adaptive milling is owned by HCL and is using its proper algorithm to generate toolpaths. So it's not licensed from uh, anybody else. It's owned by HCL. Today, volume mill is still far superior, but uh, HCL is going to uh, develop uh, adaptive milling to a point where it can compare favorably to a uh, volume mill. So maybe in a few years, uh, you may not need volume mill anymore inside of uh, CAMWorks. So this is why I thought it maybe was to mention it, that while today it's not uh, doing the same, but it's going to evolve and it's a good option. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the same part as before. Let's just look at our area clearance using volume mill. Let's look at it from the top. And you can see the tool paths generated by volume mill. Let's just quickly simulate. So this is the way that volume mill is roughing that pocket. Okay. Now let's see what adaptive milling is doing. I'm just going to hold the control key, copy that operation. and go to pattern and instead of volume wheel I'm gonna select adaptive machining. I'm gonna change step over so we can see better. This is a step over for the uh, lead in actually and here I do not have the option to select uh, let's say small uh, just the maximum cut amount and then small steps. I need to select a fixed cut amount. Okay. Let's just generate our toolpath. Let's look at it from the top. So we see it's slightly different from what uh, volume mill was generating, but still we have this kind of curved, so it's, it's not straight lines. Just simulate to see. Well, start by machining the hole. I should have uh, made an uh, avoid area or contain area. So you see it start bit differently but still uh, it's using kind of uh, trochoidal uh, milling again this is an algorithm owned by uh, camworks uh, hcl and who is going to be developed in uh, in the future to get more options to be let's say able to offer the same kind of uh, efficiency than uh, volume mill is offering today. So for Camwax user, adaptive milling is coming with a three-axis uh, milling module and uh, is doing a good job, except that, again, the feed rate is kept constant, so it's not changing all the time like in the volume mill, but still it's a, it's a good option, let's say, uh, for our thing, as you see, there is no straight lines, and so uh, it's already good for the tool and for the machine, the way um, adaptive milling is roughing that part. So just thought it would be a good idea to let you know that uh, 
if you do not have volume mill, you still could use uh, adaptive milling to get uh, good results and especially also uh, uh, using a strategy which is good for the tool, tool life and uh, gives a good uh, roughing time as well. Okay, this is it already uh, for the comparison between those two modules. Thank you for attending our What's New CamWorks 2018 webinar. We're going to have some questions time in a little bit. Uh, if any of you want to get in touch with us after this, you can email us at on support at nccs.com.au or you can give us a ring through that number. We are also having a SolarWorks event uh, in May, so that's about SolarWorks simulation, um, how we can analyze components, find out the weak points uh, and en over-engineered uh, as a section of, of your components. So once you have a certain component manufactured and produced, you know how strong it would be. So that's done in Village Green Hotel. Please register. Uh, there's a QR code there uh, with the link. Otherwise, you will also see that on our website, nccs.com.au. Thank you for attending our webinar.